What's going on guys, Zephanix here, and recently I've come across an interesting video from Angry Joe talking about the 10 ways that Superman could actually kick Batman's ass. Now, the reason why he made this video, of course, because of the Injustice Gods Among Us game coming out, and how he believes that everyone is going to go ahead and look towards Batman as the winner. Now, he kind of set himself up to be the victor, no matter how he looks at it, in terms of that particular argument, because... If everyone votes for Batman, if Batman wins, he sets himself up to actually be, you know, the guy who said, I told you that people are going to go ahead and, you know, look to Batman because who Batman is, you know, and it's a popularity contest. Where if Superman wins, he set himself up to go ahead and say, yes, my army did it or we did it as, you know, the Angry Joe army did it. We went ahead and prevailed. So either way, he comes out the victor in this. But that being said, I saw his list and I decided that um, I was going to make my own list. The 10 reasons why Batman will actually kick Superman's ass. Now, you guys, a lot of you who already know me know that I like a challenge. So, I'm going to actually go ahead and instead of making my own reasons, which pretty much everyone has already done, I'm just going to go ahead and debunk Angry Joe's reasons on why he thinks Superman could kick Batman's ass and turn him into why Batman can kick Superman's ass. So, let's get started. And uh, in the spirit of things, there we go. All right, so let's get started right now. Number one, Batman has never directly defeated Superman in canon. Now, this is absolutely true. Batman has never beat Superman in canon. Now, here's the thing. Yes, in the comic book um, storyline Sacrifice, Superman did beat Batman a lot. However, you also got to pull in the factor that this was because he was under mind control. Now, which brings up another weakness of Superman, and that's his Boy Scout mentality. Yes, Joe did mention before how um, how Superman has clashed with militaries, clashed with authority figures, government, etc., etc. He's opposed to war. Yes, but keep in mind that a Boy Scout mentality versus you know you know clashing against authority and war have nothing to do with each other. They have absolutely nothing to do with each other. The Boy Scout mentality is simply about doing what's right. It has nothing to do with, quote unquote, following orders, because we all know sometimes following orders isn't the right thing to do. With that being said, though, he did also bring up the, um, and basically, if I get into that thought, what I'm basically getting at is that because of the fact that um, Clark Kent is going to go ahead and hold back every time he goes against Batman, you know, he's automatically not going to put in his full power and therefore gives Batman that opportunity to go ahead and take him out. Now, keep in mind, Batman, is not, Batman will do whatever he needs to do in order to go ahead and win. Now, of course, depending on the, um, the outcome of the battle, for example, if Superman wins, then what happens? That depends on how hard Batman is actually going to fight. If Batman needs to kill Superman, he'll go ahead and take care of business. If he doesn't need to kill him, if there's no dangerous outcome that's going to happen after this, then Batman is not going to go ahead for the kill. But he has proven in the actual storyline that um, Angry Joe brought up, which is um, the Dark Knight, that he could actually kill him, but he didn't want to. In fact, that was actually in the comic book how he said all he had to do was make a stronger dose of, or more potent dose of the actual kryptonite, um, it was like a kryptonite gas kind of thing that he could have used in order to go ahead and kill Superman. He did not do it on purpose. And therefore, you know, just like Superman would have held back, in this particular case, it was Batman who could have got the victory, but just wanted to hold back just to go ahead and let Superman know. 
that he could have done it. Of course, he's not going to go and kill his friend. So what he did was, in order to go ahead and get away from the government, not Superman, but the government, he simply faked his death in order to get away from the government, and then came back to life. Uh, and then, like I said, death was faked. And later on, yes, he did go ahead, and Superman did hear his heartbeat. By then, the fight was over. You know? <laughs> it's like, the fight was over. If Superman did go back and go get him, what would happen? Nothing. Because it would still stand that Batman could have beat Superman if he wanted to. You know? And in many, many, many cases, for someone who's supposed to be such a powerful man of steel, has Batman definitely gone ahead and um, given Superman, this super powerful man of steel, you know, Hercules character, a run for his money. You know? But those are just examples about how, yes, Angry Joe is right. However, you give it just a slight more thought how Batman could actually go ahead and beat Superman. But Batman always has a plan. He has a specific plan to shut down all the Justice League members. Tower of Babel, Joe. Tower of Babel. Now, in this particular point that he had, he brought up three different points. Number one, um, plans don't always, you know, Batman would have a plan. And his response to that was plans don't always go according to plan. Which would be true in our case, in Superman's case as well. But the thing about Batman is Batman's plans rarely go wrong. I'm just saying, they rarely go wrong. And most of the time, he usually has an already in place contingency plan to go ahead if his plan, a slight chance that if his plan would actually go to fail. It's just, it's been proven many times in canon, by the way. Also, um, in terms of his comment regarding Rage of Ghoul, yes, Rage of Ghoul did go ahead and modify the formula in order to go ahead and stop the um, Justice League in a Tower of Babel, in Tower of Babel comic. But, keep in mind that Ra's al Ghul simply tweaked the plan. Basically, he did things like location and things of that nature. But the reality of it is that the plan was about 91 to 95% all Batman. So the real, the Rash al Ghul tweak thing really isn't an argument. Number two, the Justice League already knows that Batman has these plans in point, um, plans at this point. Don't you think that they will be prepared? Well, like you already said, plans don't always go according to plan. You know? And seeing as Batman is one of the best tactical, you know, tactical technicians in the group, I'm going to go ahead and say that no matter what plan they possibly come up with, it's probably not going to go very far against Batman unless they court Batman off guard, which in most cases is a rare feat. Now, I mean, an example would be how Superman, this because a lot in Superman comic books, Superman will actually figure out what Lex Luthor's plan is. So he'll go ahead to where Lex Luthor is actually conducting his plan to try to stop him. And in most cases, Lex Luthor still goes ahead and gets the plan off. And then Superman has to go ahead and stop that plan because he already failed the first time. Just saying, it's happened before. Why not again, right? And last but not least, if Batman gets prep time, so does his opponent. Well, yes, this is absolutely true. However, during the Dark Knight Returns storyline, which was not canon, but I'm just, that's the only kind of um, example we have because of the fact that there really was no times that Batman actually fought Superman to the point where they, um, you know, there was any prep time actually had. That was the only time that prep time was given. Um, with that in mind, Superman has, um, Superman did have time to prep in that particular point. So with that being said, how to put this? Superman didn't do anything to prep, to prepare himself for the battle. Batman did a whole bunch of stuff to prepare himself. Superman did nothing. So it would be safe to assume that Superman will continue to do nothing when to go ahead and prepare himself. I'm just saying that maybe that not be maybe that might not be right, but that's the only instance we have. That being said, you also got to factor in one particular thing. Since I, I don't like to really go off canon, so I'm going to go into canon real quick. In the storyline um, of oh, give me one second. In the storyline of uh, I believe it was the Hush storyline is when Superman, once again, his mind was taken over by, I believe it was Poison Ivory. Now, with that in mind, there was no prep time for neither one of them, but it just so happens that Batman was still prepared as he brought home, or he brought with him the kryptonite ring. You know, I'm just saying. So that definitely goes to show something as with, even with no prep time, Batman was still prepared. 
Batman has access to kryptonite and can use it to kill Superman. Okay, kryptonite gets generally portrayed to make soups feel ill and gradually weaken. It's only rarely portrayed as a Superman power off switch. Okay, Superman can counter that anyway with a radiation soup. Now, kryptonite has always been as powerful as the writers wish it to be. Now, when Superman fights Metallo or even Kryptonite Man, a whole man made out of kryptonite, he can sometimes power through it for a period of time. And that period of time would be enough to enact his plan for Batman and win that fight. Other times, though, when Batman whips out a tiny ring made of kryptonite, it has deadly effects on Superman and he's immediately paralyzed. That's bad writing, okay? Again, it's up to the writer. So this is not an automatic win. Again, Bat fans, not an automatic win. Finally, with prep time, which we both agreed to, both parties get it, Superman is capable of becoming immune to kryptonite for periods of time if he absorbs enough yellow sun energy beforehand. You don't think he's going to think of that? For example, flying next to the sun, okay? Kryptonite is no longer that win for Batman when prep time is included equally for both sides. Now, rarely have I ever heard of uh, Kryptonite being a Superman cutoff switch, but I do get what he's saying. Um, first and foremost, it's really dependent on how much of the Kryptonite is actually available. Um, the, in terms of the Kryptonite ring, which, by the way, Batman does have access to, given to him by Superman, as well as, I'm sure, other piece of Kryptonite that he may have, even if he doesn't have it, Keep in mind that he and Lex Luthor, Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor, are pretty much um, business-wise buddy-buddy. Therefore, if Batman really wanted to get more kryptonite, most likely he can get it. Most likely Luthor has that sort of resource. But the thing is with this, um, in terms of the ring, the very few times that I've actually seen the ring in action, uh, the ring was never used as a cutoff switch, but more so just enough to kind of even the odds slightly. Not even a full time, but just slightly. And yes, um, there is at one point, uh, I believe in a hush door line, where even with the ring, he can only go ahead and throw about three, maybe four punches before he actually breaks his hand or and shatters his hand completely. So, I definitely get that. However, you also have to factor in, once, I, once again, like I said before, that that's only the ring amount. More kryptonite equals more of a, how to say, more, it's more dangerous to Superman. And it's also highly dependent on how you use that kryptonite to make it even more dangerous. For example, during the Dark Knight Returns storyline, I hate to bring this up again, but I'm just saying it's one example, how they turned um, it, they turned it into a airborne um, hydrogenic, if you will, maybe the wrong word for it, but, but anyway, an airborne form of kryptonite to the part where it got inside his lungs and it really took Superman down. With that inside of his body, weakening his body even from the inside out, that could definitely turn the tide of the battle in order to go ahead and make Superman just mortal enough to go ahead and for Batman to defeat him. And flying into the whole sun thing, yes, that could work. But Superman has shown himself very, I'm going to say incompetent, to the point where he would not think of doing that first. Think about it, for example. How many times have he gone ahead and fought Metallo, who is powered by Kryptonite, and yet did not bring his lead suit or fly into the sun in the beginning of the fight. I'm just saying, not all the time, but there's been many, many times that he's done that. There's also been times where he actually saw Metallo and actually decided to go ahead and fight Metallo. You would think that if this guy is powered by Kryptonite, you look, you saw him, you didn't have your radiation suit, you would instantly fly up, go ahead and get your, um, get your power up on. Not Superman. Batman is smarter than Superman. No, he's not. Lex Luthor is the smartest human being on the planet, and Superman regularly beats him. Hell, one of Supes' major nemesis is a being that has all no knowledge in the galaxy, Brainiac, and he still finds a way to beat him. Batman gets his ass handed to him by a clown. Big old Bats has fallen down uh. on the ground. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Good, good one. Okay, okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It, it is true. However, you also got to factor in that uh, the Joker is psychotic, and it is impossible.
simple for you to go ahead and judge exactly what a psychotic man is going to make his next move and what he's going to do. It's impossible to do that because he has no real focus in his uh, movements. That being said, someone, you know, as opposed to someone like, you know, someone like Lex Luthor, for example, who is actually in the limelight at all points of time, as well as a completely sane to the point where it is pretty easy to go ahead and figure out someone who is sane's next move. And with that in mind... You are one Why did you leave me? Why? We had so much unfinished business. Who's your daddy? Even though Lex Luthor is pretty sane, it seems that Superman is pretty much powerless to go ahead and stop this guy every single time. I'm just saying, you know? So, yeah, that one, not really a good win either. Also, keep in mind of this. Yes, Superman does have the ability to do this whole super speed reading thing. But, in order to become a better tactician than Batman, it's one thing to do all this reading, but another thing to actually have the experience. And that's the thing that separates Superman from Batman, is that Batman has the experience of being a detective and being a tactician. And these are things that you can't learn from simple books. Now, with that also being said, in terms of also being a detective, in terms of his visual, his, um, you know, his able to go in and see x-ray, you know, all kinds of spectrums. The thing is this. Just because you can see those different types of visuals does not make you a better detective because it's all about knowing exactly what to look for instead of how to look for it, you know? For example, if you... I know it ain't make any sense, but let me explain to you. Imagine a wad of chewing gum being the only clue in the area to go ahead and um, point you in the direction of what you need to go ahead and find your next clue. Now, with all those spectrums, if you have all these spectrums out there, they would pretty much, well, for one, look through the chewing gum, and two, those things would not help you go ahead and find the next clue. All they do is allow you to go ahead and look through stuff. Superman has proven many, many, many times that those particular powers only lets him find obvious things, such as a lead box, you know, something in a small lead box. Hey, that might be a, a bomb, which... I believe that was actually proven wrong, but that was actually in uh, car, um, the animation, so I'm not going to go ahead and use that one. But all I'm stating is that just because you go ahead and have these multiple spectrums and able to see things like that does not necessarily make you a better detective. In fact, it probably would hinder your ability to be a detective. Batman is a better fighter, martial artist, tactician than Superman is, because Superman's merely a brawler. This has to be the most ridiculous reason. First off... With Kryptonite, Batman has seen, been seen to only get four good punches before he literally breaks all of the bones in his hand. You idiot. And here's what happens when he has no Kryptonite. So from this we see that Batman will at bare minimum need some outside help to win this fight. Now, I'm not really sure what that last part had anything to do with being a tactician or a better fighter, but yes, Batman is a better fighter or a tactician than Superman is. I mean, think about think of it this way. During the, um, the, the storyline Hush, um, basically, Superman went ahead and attacked Batman, right? Now, Batman knew exactly from the very first move, ladies and gentlemen, Batman knew exactly, uh, well, not the first move, but the first move when Batman was prepared for him, knew exactly what Superman was going to do. Not only was he able to go ahead and predict the move, but he was able to predict it fast enough where he was able to go ahead and save himself and Catwoman. Now, not only that, but Catwoman had Superman's number as well and knew exactly what to do in order to, go, well, who to go ahead and um, use as a hostage in order to get Superman to do exactly what they wanted him to do. So that's two people, ladies and gentlemen, uh, off the bat, who actually had Superman's number, okay? And keep in mind that um, Catwoman didn't, know, didn't even have this, like, she didn't study up on Superman or anything like that. She just knew what kind of person he was, and that's all she needed to know. That Boy Scout mentality that we was talking about, that's, that's also a weakness. And, you know, that's just that. 
Batman can use a gadget or magic-based item. If Batman is allowed to use the outside help with tools and weapons, so is Superman, who comes prepared with radiation suits, holograms, the Phantom Zone projector. Now, <laughs> I guess I can literally go through a whole bunch of stuff in order to go ahead and um, resolve this, but let me just kind of break it down for you like this. I'll use that Phantom Zone projector as a primary source. Um, don't you think that if Batman knows about the Phantom Zone, Phantom Zone projector and he knows two places that Superman actually keeps these items and they're about to go into a fight and Batman himself is a, you know, is pretty much trained in jiu-jitsu, able to go ahead and sneak in and out of buildings, any form of buildings without being caught, don't you think that he would have all gone ahead and um, taken the uh, Phantom Zone projector already and used it against Superman? Let's not even talk about the fact that if it was actually in uh, the Justice League building, because keep in mind, Batman's, um, Bat the computer that's actually in those particular systems are in fact, um, you know, the operating system is actually created by Batman himself. I'm just saying. So, Batman could actually go ahead and get all the items, including the Phantom Zone projector, that Superman um, already owns before Superman can even think about it. That's number one. Number two, I sincerely doubt that, um, Superman is actually going to think about getting these things. Let me tell you something, let me tell you why. Um, if you guys saw the picture, and I'm going to put it up right now, I'm hoping I remember to do this in, the, in post, but if you guys remember, um, sorry if you remember though, but if you see this picture right here, this is Superman in his, um, in his protective lead suit, right? But it took Batman to tell him, hey, use protection, put on a suit. We learned that shit in a freaking, uh, high school. Hey, put on a condom, use protection. Same thing with that situation right there. So Superman's not smart enough to put on a goddamn suit so he won't get hit by, um, you know, kryptonite anymore. You think he's smart enough to bring a fam zone projector? And for the record, let's talk about that one thing he said before about how Superman can go ahead and use his x-ray vision inside of Batman's gadgets and find ways to improve them. Uh, so I'm going to get this straight. This guy knows how to go ahead and make complicated machinery, and yet he became a reporter. And you don't call that bad writing? I'm just saying. Now, when going against a higher level entity, a galactic cosmic whatever, Batman is almost always accompanied by Superman or the Justice League. Uh, as on his own, the full focus of that level of villain would be extremely one-sided for Batman. Who is more important to the Earth versus alien threats? Batman or Superman? Who is the most iconic hero? Who inspires through hope instead of instilling fear through vengeance? Who's the guy who always wants to fall under every single person's mind control? Seriously, Superman falls under mind control easier than a whore falls to her knees. Seriously, I don't even understand how he does that. And all these cosmic beings that Angry Joe likes to talk about how he fought. And you've got to understand that at the same time, it's those lower beings like the Scarecrow, who is technically speaking a B or a C class um, villain from the Batman Rogues Gallery, who has put Superman under control many times. You know, I'm just saying. Also, incidentally, Every time that Batman has had to go through like some other world where there's someone else like a lot stronger than him, it's always because of A, it's his duty, and B, it's because of Superman um, acquired his help. So the only thing that really proves is that um, Batman has a better sense of duty as well as, well, more braver than Superman could ever hope to be. But why does that happen? Because he's human and we're human. And we want to see that in a world with all of these godlike figures, Batman can still be relevant. Okay, but the fact from all that is, Batman can die. Batman can die, Superman can be reborn. So even if Batman were to somehow get the upper hand on Superman or put Superman down, Superman has come back from death. This is true, Superman has come back from death. Keep in mind though, if by chance Batman did get the opportunity to put Superman down, keep in mind um, as proven in canon from the Doomsday vs. Superman fight, the original one that is, um, keep in mind that it was pretty much Superman was down for the count for a good couple of months. 
that is more than enough time for Batman to go ahead and take care of Superman by any means necessary. Would that mean he's taking a rocket, shooting him off into someplace else? I would assume not the sun. And uh, also going ahead and um, doing whatever they need to do with him. Either way. And not to mention, keep in mind that at the point of time when, um, when Superman was defeated by Doomsday, which would be at his lowest point, he was pretty much, for the most part, mortal. Sure, he was able to come back from life, but that's because they preserved his body. So what if they were to go ahead and do high damage to his body, such, such as, I don't know, throw him into a volcano while he was at his lower point? There was no sun in a volcano, and therefore, with that being said, would definitely bring him, and especially if they put him in a kryptonite box, would definitely go ahead and kill off Superman. Should be no problem at all, assuming, of course, it was at that particular pivotal moment when Superman would have his absolute weakness. Possible, why then would Superman not win if Superman was bloodlusted? If he was, if everything in his life has been taken away from him? If his city has been destroyed? If his love has been killed? If his parents have been murdered? Now, this is kind of like modifying the rules all of a sudden, because now we're talking about what if he was bloodlusted. Well, that wasn't originally what you said. We weren't talking about how someone was, if one particular party was mad or not. You didn't mention that, you know, but what you did mention was simply, you know, just a one-on-one -on -one battle. But, okay, yeah, if he was bloodlusted, if anyone was bloodlusted, the, power, um, the, the, the battle could definitely go in anyone's particular favor, especially the person who is actually at a point where he is so pissed off that he's willing to do whatever he needs to do to go ahead and make sure everything gets resolved. That's been proven many, many, many times. So I can definitely give you that, but at the same time, that's kind of cheating, as that wasn't really, you know, that's kind of modifying it, you know, modifying the current situation, the kind of rules and regulations you set upon making that video and making this, you know, and how I govern myself to make this particular video to go ahead and fit an additional reasoning to go ahead and get a win for you. So we're just going to call that one null and void. Even in Hush, Batman's own story, mind you, Bats admits that Superman would have destroyed him in the blink of an eye if he wanted to. Hush is one of the most widely regarded Batman comics, where Batman admits multiple times that Superman would win if in a fight if all things were equal. This is absolutely true. The Hush fight is actually one of my favorite ones. I mean, it wasn't a long fight, but it was one where Batman really did show his, um, you know, he talked a lot about that particular situation. But in that particular comic, just like uh, Batman said, Superman is the best at what he does but not the best at what Batman does. And Batman is the best at kicking some ass, as well as detective work, but you get the idea. But here's the situation with that. Um, yes, he does say that in multiple situations, but the thing is, is that if he wanted to, he could, but the re reality of it is that Superman will always hold back, which is what I said in the original, in the, in the, the first part, where I, in the beginning of the video, is that that Boy Scout mentality is going to be the decisive victor between if Batman wins or if Batman falls. And because of the fact that he is that had that Boy Scout mentality, Batman will always come out the winner because by the time that he actually figures out that that Boy Scout mentality is not the best way to go with this particular fight, most likely and hopefully Batman is smart enough to figure out that he needs to go ahead and end this fight before that happens. So there you go. And keep in mind, also in that fight, um, excuse me, in that particular storyline he's talking about, is the storyline where Batman knew exactly what Superman was going to do when he did it, and even Catwoman knew how to go ahead and make Superman do what he wanted, what she wanted to do. It's just that simple, you know. But all in all, in the end of the days, we're all fans of comics. You know, we're all fans of comics. We love comics. We enjoy them. We love reading them. And you know, I, I don't want the Batman symbol simply because of the uh, fact that uh, Joe had the Superman symbol on. But the reality of it is, is that both characters I, I absolutely adore. It's just just like Joe likes Superman over Batman. You know, I like Batman over Superman. You know, so it just um, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's the whole Dark Knight, Dark Skin thing. I don't know. But the reality of it is that it's one of my favorite, um, it's one of my favorite comic book heroes who always has been. I plan to definitely jump on Injustice, Gods Among Us, and whoop every single one of your asses with the Dark Knight itself. 
And maybe um, I'll go ahead and throw in some uh, Nightwing for good measure. Or maybe I'll use Robin from the DLC. I mean, he hasn't been announced, but I'm just saying. Think about it for a second. The only character right now that I've seen so far in the comic books that is not in the game is Robin. So I'm thinking Robin's going to be a, a DLC character, one of the first ones. But don't forget to go ahead and um, definitely pick up the game. The game's going to be released this Tuesday on the 16th. Stand in mind. You guys have a good night. Death out.